What is 5G? How is it going to change the world? Why is it beneficial for your business? What came first, the chicken or in fact the egg? All of these things and many more questions will be answered in this very special roundtable edition of Samsung Business Television. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Jason, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Jason Clay, Samsung Networks, Business Development and Marketing. And Derek, could you also introduce yourself? Sure. Derek Johnston, uh, 5G Business Development and Marketing for Samsung Networks. To start, what is 5G? 5G is the, uh, the next generation of mobile network technology. To quantify that, because people love numbers, how much faster are we talking 5G? Sure, it's, it's a blazing fast. So it's 20 times faster than 4G LTE in its current state today. Wow. But more impressively, and this is where the other use cases come in, is massive connectivity support. So um, up to 100 times more devices on a per square kilometer of coverage area can be supported with, with 5G networks. Wow. And lower latency. So that is, you know, that kind of like lightning fast, being able to deliver things like HD video, almost as if it's on a, a fiber backbone. Why is low latency such a game changer? Low latency, what, what you're really there, measuring there is how long it takes round trip to move data from one point to another, okay? okay? The lower that latency as a function of time, the more you could do with real-time applications. That's gonna enable a lot of machine-to-machine -machine communication. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a big time enabler for IoT and for automation in the workplace. So it's gonna lead to things like autonomous vehicles in a warehouse, autonomous forklifts, um, autonomous cherry pickers, there's going to, the production line is going to be much more efficient. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to see efficiencies in, that are provided by the network show up in the bottom line of our, of our companies. What is 5G going to enable us? Because right now everyone's pretty familiar with 4G, 3G. In terms of performance, uh, the, the performance levels, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty mind blowing. But um, the real performance parameter that'll bring a lot of different use cases is low latency. So the ability to really deliver things like HD video almost in real time. Mm -hmm. So in today's environment, that, that would have to be delivered over fiber, but it could be done wirelessly. And then the other, the other piece of it is capacity. So okay. uh, a lot of the networks are strained these days, but uh, we've figured out ways to, to use a uh, spectrum that was previously thought not usable, mm -hmm. millimeter wave spectrum, so way up on the, on, uh, you know, on, the, on the spectrum levels. We have verticals that we focus on here at Samsung, uh, manufacturing being one of them. What are some of the ways, what are some use cases that 5G is really going to be impressive for manufacturing? For manufacturing, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hotbed of activity for 5G. In fact, we just made an announcement here recently with, with AT&T and with uh, Sam, Samsung Semiconductor, mm -hmm. where we're setting up a test bed in the Austin facility, our Austin Semiconductor facility. Very cool. Uh, yeah, which is really interesting because we're testing a whole variety of, of different applications, mm -hmm. uh, IoT-based applications, some HD uh, video monitoring for safety that uh, are set to, to really kind of move the smart factory forward. And uh, these, these particular applications are uh, really compelling for a variety of reasons. A lot because they, you've got hardwired applications today that make the manufacturing and the fabrication facility fairly static. Mm. And manufacturing kind of needs to move to a more mobile environment, particularly when they get into sort of mass customization type of applications or they need to change things on the line. And you just frankly can't do that when your machines, your robotics, your automation are all hardwired. So 5G will give them that kind of low latency uh, and, and capacity that they need for all that connectivity in the, in the actual test bed. And so we'll, we expect to have some, some really compelling results out of that. So what about, uh, what about like aviation, for example? What are we seeing in aviation? Well, whenever a plane pulls up to the gate, you have a ton of data in a short amount of time to pull that data off of an airplane, mm -hmm. right? It's somewhere north of two terabytes, could be up to 10 terabytes. Most cases, they don't offload all that data, that flight data right now. They get the bare minimum of what they need to get off because they've got 40 minutes to make a turn. When you have multiple gigabit connections that can go from an aircraft that's on the ground into the gate terminal, get in the network and you have that ultra low latency, you're able to push more of that really uh, important data off the plane that helps keep them in the air. What about in, uh, transportation is another important vertical for us? Yeah, transportation is really interesting one too because uh, I think the industry is very hot on how there's transformational impacts to 5G. And so one of the things that, that we've tested um, uh, recently in, in Suwon was this concept of platooning. So this is kind of early autonomous driving where for like your long haul fleets or some of the transportation and distribution companies, they can use uh, this 
a technique called platooning, where essentially you've got a autonomous driving vehicle, if you will, but mm. they're they're drafting with each other. They're super close. So the two, say it's two trucks that are following a lead truck, the two trucks behind are effectively autonomous driving vehicles. They're driver assisted, so there's drivers inside them. They have a view of the front of the vehicle via a video link, so they can see what's happening up in front and then behind them through another video link in the last truck. And believe it or not, these these trucks can you know are super close to each other. They get 10% efficiencies on their fuel. Wow. 10% doesn't sound like much, but it's an, it's millions of dollars to I these see, fleets. Cost savings wise, you start looking mm -hmm. at 10 million dollars in a typical year. It's Absolutely. A, or 10, it's actually be 10%. It's probably tens of millions of dollars over a period yeah. of time. Yeah. All right. So how about healthcare? What's what are some use cases in healthcare for 5G? One of the more interesting use cases that we've been talking about is being able to arm EMTs with body cameras mm -hmm. so that they can communicate in real time. Remember, low latency is super important. How fast do I get that data back and forth over this really fast and reliable network? Put a doctor right there looking through the lens of a camera right. at, an, at, at an accident. EMTs are trained fantastically, but there are life-saving measures that only doctors can do. So if you put a doctor in the ear of the EMT, with a visual on scene, oh, wow. now you're talking about some things that could really save lives. And 5G, along with LTE, is inherently a very secure technology. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about medical records, transporting, uh, digital imaging, transporting fast. If we're talking about you could download a movie in two seconds, you know, MRIs are really heavy files. Right. And they'll stop giving them to you on a DVD. Yes, which exactly. is a thing that, that actually, that which is a real this summer, which is a real thing people don't realize. Yep. You get how your images on a DVD, and you're like, "How do I look at this? I don't even have a DVD drive." Exactly. Yeah. One of the, one of the other ones to add on to Jason's point that's that's at the forefront of this uh, mm -hmm. in terms of 5G reality, if you will, in the front end of the commercial builds is, is kind of AR VR aspects of it. The healthcare providers have been using VR for things like pain reduction management, having visualizations of, of patients who are going through post-op and have found that they can, they can get a patient out uh, feeling 25% better, if you will, <laughs> of just doing visualizations of VR. Now, hmm. the problem in today's environment is, is a lot of those setups are wired. And so they're on a you know, heavy duty PC that's wired into the healthcare network, they're Got expensive it. goggles. And so you can, and, and then you have to bring the patient in right. a post-op scenario to the actual device or to a location. Not very so, mobile. Yeah. Exactly. And so 5G will, exactly. And 5G will be able to unleash these applications. What are some pretty cool use cases and, and some of the benefits to 5G in a smart city? Sure. This is another one that, that, that Samsung's kind of out in front of. We have a test bed in, in Suwon, Korea, where we've mm -hmm. set up a variety of different applications. That's really exciting in terms of, of what 5G can do for municipalities and, and for the general public in terms of, of services that are available. But, you know, in terms of, of you know, applications that will change or help cities in terms of managing their resources and things like that. We've got um, this test bed that, that does everything from traffic management and what I would call um, video monitoring mm -hmm. applications where uh, they're tying the two applications together. So for example, if you have a fairly busy um, intersection and you've got an HD, you know, closed circuit uh, television camera that's monitoring, you have an accident, we can use um, kind of AR overlaid um, or AI, I should say, driven mm -hmm. analytics to alert public safety officials that there's been an accident and then they get a real time feed of that HD camera to, sh to then dispatch the appropriate amount of, of public safety officials. So you can almost classify it as it's happened by, because a fender bender is very different than like a T-bone where airbags are deployed. So you can actually maybe even look at hooking that to emergency services. Everybody knows what, immediately what they're getting into. and then they're Precisely. Oh, and we've all seen on the news the standard definition cameras. If you've seen this person of interest, you know, when you transition to 4K video mm -hmm. and you have a network that can support that in real time, then it's going to help law enforcement be able to keep us a little bit safer. Absolutely. And so you can take that, these kind of applications, take them to the next level, which is then you've got that connectivity of the connected car when you get there, right? And so that traffic information can then be relayed to say your Waze application or your Google Maps mm -hmm. for people that are two blocks away to reroute them dynamically away from, away the, accident. from the accident. Yeah. Uh, where are we from a perspective of like a commercial rollout? Is this, is this now, is it in the future, a year, is it happening? It's a bit of both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's now from the, from the perspective of uh, the first use case we talked about, which is this fixed wireless access or getting you know, broadband service to your home or small business. And right. so Samsung's working with Verizon for their 5G home service. Okay. Uh, and so we're providing them with all of the kind of commercial home 5G routers. And again, that's, that's providing people with a broadband alternative 
that they might get in, you know, in cities like Sacramento or Houston or Indianapolis. Uh, and so those, um, th that service is out there. That's the first iteration of 5G. Um, mm -hmm. The operators now are, are starting to build out what they're calling the 5G NR or mobile mm -hmm. networks. And so those are gonna be built out through 2019. And then 2020, will, I think is when we'll start to see broad-based you know, 5G availability in most of your major metropolitan areas through mm -hmm. across most of the major operators. But we do have the applications that support the need for this with IoT, machine learning, AI, blockchain, yeah. things like that are really coming online. They need that plumbing to be able to have the capacity and the coverage mm. and the latency requirements for those networks. This is very new to a lot of people. Is this just in the US? Is it anywhere else in the world? Like where is 5G going to be a thing? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a global standard, just like 4G LTE was. And so, you know, the standard, the, the, the first phase of the standard has been established. Mm. Um, the US is trying to stake out a leadership position and we've, you know, argu arguably have, have deployed the first um, 5G networks. Uh, that being said, uh, China and South Korea are definitely, you know, going toe to toe. Eventually, we're all going to get there. Whenever you're building these cellular networks, they're not built in a year. Yeah, and 4G LTE networks will still continue, you know, for, for many years to come. I mean, we're getting to gigabit levels. And so the, that, you know, what it's called, uh, long-term evolution, right? And that, right. that technology has evolved. Every standard, we get better and better. And we're, you know, getting to the point where, mm -hmm. where 4G LTE is really rip roaring fast. What else are you guys excited about with 5G? Like, what else, what really gets you guys like pumped for this? Because this is pretty cool stuff. Oh man, I can't wait to watch a sporting event with a VR and a sideline cam or a helmet cam. When you look at 4G LTE and what it did for things like ride sharing, like Uber, you know, things that mm -hmm. didn't sure. exist before yeah. that we haven't even thought of. So I mean, that's one thing that I find really compelling. Jason, thank you so much for coming in. Derek, thank you so much for coming in and talking about 5G uh, and what it means for the market and why it's so important for business and the future of all technology, which is pretty cool stuff. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And we'll see you on the next very special roundtable edition of Samsung Business Television.